Hi, I'm Ayla with True Systems, and today we're looking at the one MBTI trait that really divides Enneagram 5s. So MBTI and the Enneagram don't line up one-to-one. -one. So there are multiple MBTI types that can be different Enneagram types and vice versa. This is because MBTI and the Enneagram actually look at different things. So MBTI is looking at cognitive preferences while the Enneagram is looking at motivations, fixations, and fears. So we're gonna be focusing on how INTJ, INTP, ISTJ, and ISTP all manifest differently as Enneagram type fives. So what is an Enneagram type five? They're often called the observers. They're logical, rational, they're independent and knowledgeable and hate intrusions. They're the people you go to when you really need to know something. So why these four MBTI types for Enneagram type five? So let's go through the four MBTI preference pairs to see which ones work for five. So in general, fives lean towards introversion. You can see that in their withdrawing stance and in their wanting to be observing and apart from things. So they tend to be introverts rather than extroverts. They tend to make decisions based on logic and reason rather than their own emotions or feelings. So they tend to lean towards thinking in the MBTI rather than feeling. So this leaves sensing and intuition and perceiving and judging. I'm gonna talk about P and J later in the video, but what I'm really gonna be focusing on is that sensing and intuition and how it really influences how Enneagram Type 5 presents. And I know MBTI can get way more complicated than this with all of the cognitive functions, but for this video, since we're adding in the Enneagram, I'm gonna keep it kind of simple for explaining the MBTI. So why is this divide between S and N so important for fives? This is because fives are motivated to gain knowledge and understand the world and to be competent in it. And S and N is how the MBTI describes how we gather information and understand the world. So types with a sensing preference like ISTJs and ISTPs tend to gain understanding by focusing on the details first. They tend to prefer concrete, practical information that's based on past understanding and experiences. Types with an intuition preference, on the other hand, like INTJs and INTPs, tend to like to focus on the big picture first. They tend to be interested in underlying patterns and looking at abstract ideas and concepts and future possibilities. So S and N really influences how we think about things and process information. And so you can see how this is going to be really important for fives. So we're gonna be looking at some classic traits for fives and seeing how MBTI can really influence how they manifest specifically for S and N. So fives often get talked about being super observant. They're often called the observers, but what they observe and how they observe those things is different depending on their MBTI type. S dominant fives are really good at noticing and observing concrete details in their environment. Things like changes in their physical setting and noticing minor details. They're also really good at absorbing and retaining practical information. So an example of this would be noticing things like a squeaky door and what's going on with it and maybe even being able to fix it. Noticing things like coming back to class and that the desks have been moved. Like those spot the difference pictures. So things like remembering where they parked their car might be easier for an S dominant five, but it's more than that. It's more like recognizing and remembering all the cars that were nearby and maybe even the bumper stickers that were on them and being able to clearly visualize it. You know, noticing like what kind of bird just landed by. Oh, that's a Western meadow lark. And knowing the Latin term. N dominant fives are really good at noticing and observing larger trends. They're really good at spotting patterns and being able to fit it into a broader context. This makes them really good at constructing theories and being able to take disparate details that most people wouldn't see go together and see how they can come together. So this would be things like observing that there's more and more hot sauces at restaurants and going and jumping towards why do millennials eat more hot sauce? So like all of a sudden this big picture question 
and then wanting to construct a theory around it by asking more questions. So things like, do millennials actually consume more hot sauce? Or just a greater variety? Is it because they're a more diverse generation? Is the hot sauce supply chain just more efficient now? Are people's taste buds changing? Are humans evolving? So as you can see, it can grow into a lot of big ideas. So all of these fives are highly observant, but again, what they observe and what they do with those observations are different. Now that being said, it's not that INTJ and INTPs can't see details or that ISTJs and ISTPs can't see the big picture. It's just what they focus on first. ISTJs and ISTPs start with concrete facts and then eventually may decide to put it into a broader framework, while INTPs and INTJs are going to want to start with a broad concept and then look to details to see if it supports or challenges their theories. So another trait that fives are known for is fact checking. Fives love to fact check. Whether or not you actually hear it, it's happening. But what they fact check and how they do that is different. S dominant five style of fact checking is straightforward. It's to the point and it focuses on whether or not something is in fact a fact. They're less concerned with categorizing what kind of misinformation or non-fact that it is. So someone makes a claim that the oldest woman was Italian and must have been eating a lot of pasta and so we should eat a lot of pasta. And the S dominant five is gonna fact check that and be like, she was French. N dominant fives, these types are interested in the nature of facts and misinformation. They like to understand facts and want to classify what type of non-fact it is. So they might be interested in fallacies and cognitive biases and noticing when somebody says them. So they might hear that same factoid about the longest living woman and think, are you sure that eating pasta is why she lived so long? It seems like you're confusing correlation and causation. Could it be her genes that made her live so long? Or perhaps she exercised a lot. So just like they like to take information and fit it into a larger context in order to understand something, they like to take misinformation and fit it into a larger context to understand why people are dumb. So both fact check and are often right but they look at different things. By the way, if you are loving this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you are loving this deep dive, but have even more questions, write them in the comments below, but also reach out to me. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I'd love to hear from you. So another trait that fives are known for is being intellectually curious, but where that curiosity leads them is different depending on being S or N dominant. S dominant fives tend to be curious about tangible information that's rooted in what's real and something that's measurable. So they might be interested in something like classic cars and knowing details about the history or being interested in the physics of an internal combustion engine. They may have expertise and know how to work on those cars too. Or they may point out and notice when they see those cars around them in their general environment. They tend to be curious about the details of something that they're interested in and tend to want to do hands-on learning, like taking apart electronics and then putting them back together again to understand how they work. N dominant fives tend to be curious about theoretical ideas and how things can connect in unexpected ways. They tend to be curious about future possibilities and abstract ideas. So they might be interested in things like quantum physics or the nature of the universe. Will faster than light travel be possible? And if it is, is another intelligent species already doing it? So they might be interested in shifts in the political landscape and being able to connect different news articles and social media trends. So like what movies get made? Like what do all of these Spider-Man movies say about changes in American society? So there's curious about those big trends. So S and N dominant types might be curious in really different topics, but in some cases it can be the same topic, but they're interested in it in different ways. So for example, you might have an S dominant five that's a foodie and really curious about mastering how to make a certain traditional kind of noodle and knowing all of the details involved in doing that. And an N dominant five might also be a foodie and really interested in noodles, but have like big noodle questions. 
And wondering why China historically has lots of noodles, but India doesn't? And if you know the answer to this, please write it in the comments below. I need to know! So an S dominant or an N dominant five can go down the same rabbit hole, but the twists and turns that they go down are different depending on their MBTI type. So speaking of rabbit holes, fives are known for being really rabbit holy. When a five gets into something, they get really into it and want to know a lot about it. But this will look differently for S dominant fives or N dominant fives. So an S dominant five is going to be focused on mastering a skill and knowing everything about it. They're going to be interested in completing a project and understanding all of the different parts of a system. So for example, they might be interested in something like gardening and then go down a rabbit hole about understanding gardening even more. So not just being interested in digging around in the dirt, but like knowing the pH of the soil, installing temperature and humidity trackers in the backyard, knowing all the different climate zones, reading about every different type of tomato, studying common pests and diseases, rabbit holy. And dominant fives are going to get into some philosophical rabbit holes, some theoretical rabbit holes, open-ended projects with speculative ideas. So for example, becoming engrossed in writing a science fiction Why? novel, doing anthropological research for world building, linguistics research for having an accurate but fake language, reading scientific papers and then imagining future possible breakthroughs considering historical or contemporary parallels. So yeah, rabbit holes. Also, is all of Wikipedia fives? Cause like, it's just a platform for rabbit holes. So fives aren't always just known for wasting their time on Wikipedia. They're known for being innovative, but the way they innovate is different depending on being S or N dominant. S dominant fives innovate in very practical ways. They're going to innovate ways to solve problems and improve systems and make them more efficient. They're really good at being MacGyvers and able to fix things. So for example, they might come up with new ways to use traditional building materials, like figuring out a way to make a wall that's just as structurally sound but uses less wood and has more insulation. Or proving that duct tape can be an effective treatment for warts. So innovating to solve practical problems. N dominant fives innovate to create new theories and new technologies. So for example, coming up with a totally new way to educate using virtual reality. Do we even need teachers? What do they even do? Do we even need students? So they also innovate, but they might completely change the framework of how we see something. So both innovate and we can thank fives for that. They just do it in really different ways. So you might feel like you're a mixture of both N and S traits, and that's actually really normal. That's because each preference pair is actually a spectrum and nobody is completely only S or N. So we've been focusing a lot on this S and N divide, but what about perceiving and judging? So this is how MBTI describes wanting to have a plan and needing to have a plan, J, or feeling constrained by a plan and not wanting to have one. P. Because of this, INTP and ISTPs tend to be more interested in experimenting and less likely to stick to one single method for doing that. They tend to be more flexible with how they approach a problem or an idea, but can have trouble with follow through. INTJ and ISTJ fives tend to be more structured and systematic in their approach. They tend to prefer having more organized methods and clear systems for solving a problem and coming up with a new idea. They tend to value order and predictability, so sometimes struggle with doing things on the fly. There's more we could say about the P and J divide for fives, but that's another video. So you may have heard all of this and you don't relate to it at all. So what's going on there? Can these four MBTI types be other Enneagram types? Yes! Again, this is because MBTI and Enneagram are looking at different things, so they really work in conjunction with each other. So you might have completely different motivations. For example, you might be one of these MBTI types, but you're actually a six. In which case, the way that these MBTI types manifest is going to be different. So other common types that you tend to see with these MBTI types are ones, sixes, and nines and then less common with threes and eights. 
In fact, I have a whole video on how INTJs can be fives or ones. So if you're one of these MBTI types and you didn't relate to this Enneagram type five, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your experience. And I also want to hear from fives out there. What did I get right? What did I get wrong? I have been learning so much from all of you. I can't say it enough. I love the conversations we've been having. So thank you so much for being here and I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks again. Bye.